Oh, you just bought one of the most perfect sport bikes on the planet. And it's gonna be my pleasure to walk through it with you. So, welcome to your brand new Ducati Panigale V2. Let's go over some of the cool stuff on this thing. All right, first things first. Give me a favor and like this video and subscribe to Motocourse's YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you can be updated anytime we do a cool video like this. If you have any ideas on what you wanna see next, drop a comment down there and let us know and we can try and have some fun with you and do some great engagement and videos so that you can enjoy it and we can figure out some new ways to have some you know, fun together. All right, so you got the bike, you're about to leave the dealership, you got a thought in your head, how do I break this thing in? It's pretty simple, don't overcomplicate it for yourself. First things first, let the dealership know that you are gonna break the bike in and the service department needs to create an appointment for you to get this thing in, to get its break in done so that you can go out there and really have some fun on the track. But while you're doing that, Ducati's giving you a thousand kilometers, so about a 620 something miles to ride this bike and introduce low to high load to the motor and the transmission. What does that mean? Low load is first gear, high load is sixth gear, and you're going to eventually and gradually introduce all those to the motorcycle. What do you not want to do? You don't want to redline the bike. Also, you don't want to kind of drone on in the same gear for an elongated period of time. So maybe don't go for a cross country trip on the highways on the bike just yet. Enjoy the back roads and just kind of introduce low and high load to the bike slowly, up and down shift with it. And then once you've done that, get the break-in done, get the service finished with, and then go ride it to your heart's content. And hopefully you'll have many, many awesome trouble-free miles with your motorcycle. Before we get technical, let's just take a minute and admire this beautiful motorcycle. One of my favorite things is this gorgeous front end on the bike. It is undoubtedly, unmistakably a Ducati. All the way from the front to the back with that single-sided swing arm and that noise the motor makes. It is such a great motorcycle and I'm really glad you have one. Uh, Ducati has been kind and put a set of Prelli Rosa courses on this thing. I love this tire. It's a great dual compound tire that can handle street riding and also track riding with unbelievable ease and it doesn't really need a tire warmer but never a bad idea to have one on the track. Let's talk about the key. Functionally the key on the Panigale V2 and on the Street Fighter V2 are identical. In fact a lot of the functions we're going to go through here are going to be identical across the board here. So first job of the key is going to be to turn the bike on. So you put it in here and turn it and boom everything's on and ready to go. When you're done you can just turn it off or you can turn the steering all the way to one side or the other, press down on the key and turn it and now it is locked. Remember these keys are coded to these bikes so if you do lose one of these keys, make sure you reach out to your dealership. There's a way around that. If you're in kind of a little bit of pickle, I'll go over that during the functions of the dash. But let's talk about the other function of the key, the gas tank. Just put it in there, open it, fill it up and then when you're done, close it, press it till you hear that click and you're back to riding the bike again. All right, so the last function of the key is to remove the rear seat. If you have the dual seat option on the bike, this comes in handy. If you have a solo option that you can get aftermarket, this doesn't really work for you that well, but you turn the key and it lo and allows you to just pull the seat straight out. There's a tiny little pocket in here with a little Allen wrench. So if you need to put something away, you can. It doesn't have a whole lot of space in there, but at least there's something. Now, the tricky part comes to actually putting the seat back in. If you try and push it in, it's not gonna do anything. You actually have to turn the key again and that allows you to push it in. You'll hear that nice little click and boom, just like that, we're back to normal. One of the best functions in this bike is the quick shift for up and down shifting. In case you've never ridden a bike with a quick shifter, it's gonna change things for you because it's so smooth and it's so intuitive. But for those of you who haven't done it before, I kind of go over it uh, in a simplified version. So the bike is still a manual. You still have a clutch that you can pull and actuate to kind of go through the gears. And in fact, you can turn the quick shifter off altogether if you want to. But if you want to get used to it, once you engage first gear and you've gotten rolling, as long as you've been giving the bike a good amount of uh, positive throttle input, you can just simply kick it into the next gear. The computer uh, knows from the little message from the sensor here to slow down timing a little bit and it pops into the next gear and it's seamless. On downshifts, if you're rolling off the throttle and kick it down to the next lower gear, it'll actually auto rev match for you. So it makes it you can really concentrate on the curves and the road ahead and not think too, too much about how to do the clutch properly. So it makes you a much smoother rider. Again, if you haven't done it before, try it out. It'll really, really change things up for the best for you. All right, let's talk about the controls. First things first, on the right hand side, your throttle side, you've got three buttons. Top one is gonna to be to turn the bike on and off. As long as the key is on the auxiliary on mode, you can bring it down and get the bike prepped to turn it on. If the bike is in neutral and the kickstand is 
down in neutral, you can still turn it on. If the bike is in gear and the kickstand's down, you cannot turn it on. So I would say pull the kickstand up and then you can pull the clutch in and fire the bike up if it's in gear. But again, I always try to tell people to put it in neutral because that makes life a little bit better for everybody. Um, below that, you've got a little switch with a headlight on there. That is for your daytime running lamp. It does have an auto function on there, but if you want to turn it off manually and you think the headlights aren't turning on quickly enough for you, you can just press that button. There's a little green light on the dash that will indicate that the DRL is on. If the green light's off, it means the DRL is off and the headlights are on. Below that, you've got your hazard switch. You simply click it to the right and your hazards are on. You can even turn the bike off once you've done that and the hazards keep blinking. You cannot turn it simply off when the bike is off. You have to turn it on again on the motorcycle side and boom, hazards are off and we're back to normal. Okay, let's talk about the switches on the left side. You've got five buttons here. Top one, which is accessed by your index finger, is for a quick pass. You just kind of press it quickly and it'll turn the high beams on just for a second, just to get someone's attention in front of you. If you want to keep the high beams on permanently, you can just press this button up. And just like that, your high beams are on. If you want to turn them off, bring them down to your low beams. Next to that, you have an up and down button that I will use and re, you know reference a couple of times when we're going over the rest of the menu on the actual dash. So keep this button in mind when I say up and down, that's what you're gonna be using. Below that, you've got your turn, turn signal indicator for left and right. While the turn signals are on, if you press it once, it'll turn off your turn signal. When they're off, if you press them only once, if you're inside of, let's say, the uh, settings menu, it'll allow you to you know, select things, so that's your enter switch. And then when you're not in the, in the uh, setup menu and you're just on your regular dash, if you press it and hold it down for about two seconds, it'll take you into mode selection. I'll go over the, that a little more in depth for you. And below that is one of my favorite buttons in the whole wide world, the horn button. Let's go over the dash. Now, I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Make sure you are looking at your owner's manual. Um, all right, so <laughs> once I put that out of the way, let's go over this stuff here. I'm gonna be using two buttons mainly as I go over this. One's gonna be the up and down, and the other one's gonna be the enter. So when you hear me say up and down, that's what we're pressing. When I say enter, that's what we're pressing. Got it? Let's keep going. Okay, let's talk about the basics of the dash. There's a lot of information on here, so I'll kind of go over it quickly with you. But on the dash, you'll notice there's a bunch of flashing lights uh, around the dash itself. As long as the bike is stationary and it's turned on, your ABS and uh, traction control lights are going to be blinking because there's no motion and so the bike thinks something is wrong. But as soon as you start rolling, those turn off quickly. Uh, you've got your neutral lights on the bottom left corner of the dash, but also in the middle of the tachometer. Uh, you got your little fuel reserve light on. Right now the bike is brand new. It's only got four miles on it, so we haven't put any fuel in it. And then on the right side of the dash, again, because the engine's not running, the little oil light is on letting you know that nothing's going on there's no oil pressure uh, sensed and then the green light uh, on the very right that is your daytime running lamp light it's a little bit counterintuitive because if that lights on it does not mean that your headlights are on it just means your DRL is on there's another little button uh, light just like that one in the actual dash itself it's a little headlight with an a in the middle of it that's just saying that the DRL is on the auto mode and you can turn that off if you want to and I'll go over that with you so while we're in the middle of the dash let's go over the you know what you see here far than your information is concerned top left is gonna have your engine uh, temperature below that you're gonna have your speedometer and if the kickstand was down it would actually let you know the kickstands down as well below that you've got the aforementioned uh, daytime running lamp indicator below that you've got your little uh, window that has all the information that you can scroll through with the up and down switch for consumption average speed average actually let's go to the top here so you've got your trip one that is currently zeroed and trip one is going to be in charge of your consumption average one which is for trip one Speed average one, again, based on trip one, and then the trip time based on trip one. Below that, you've got your air temperature, which is ambient air based on the intake. Below that, you're gonna have your trip fuel. And this is kind of letting you know how long you've been riding with the um, gas light on. So as soon as the gas light turns on, your trip fuel comes on, and it just kind of counts down how many miles you've been riding. So hopefully you kind of get an idea of how far you can go. Typically on this bike, if you're riding it 
you know, well below the halfway point of the RPM range. You're going to be in the 30 to 40 mile per hour uh, per gallon fuel range, but that's going to vary wildly differently between rider to rider. Below that, you've got your trip two. If you want to zero this out or trip one, while you're there, you press the enter button once and it'll say reset, question mark, and if you hit enter again, it'll zero it out for you. And then below that, you've got your current consumption. The bike's not moving, so it's all zeroed out. And as you can tell, it is currently on miles per gallon US as opposed to miles per gallon UK. And then the settings menu, ah, the settings menu. Let's go into that. All right, so the settings menu, this is where you get to change a lot of settings on the bike. And for most people, the most important aspect that is going to be the ride mode. So let's enter. And you can see there's riding mode and a bunch of other stuff below it, but let's just go right into the riding mode so we can learn all about it. So we're gonna hit enter again, and you'll see that you have three different distinct riding modes on this motorcycle, race, sport, and street. It comes preset from the factory pretty well, but Ducati says this is your bike and you get to ch select and choose how you want it to behave. So you have the freedom of doing that. So let's go straight into the sport mode, hit enter once. And now you'll see it's giving you an option for engine and so on and so forth. So we're gonna click on engine first by hitting enter. And you've got high, medium, or low. On sport mode, I tend to have it either on high or medium, that's up to you. But as you can see, if you have it on high, it says it's full power and dynamic. Medium is still full power and smooth, which means the initial throttle response is going to be much softer. And then low is just much lower power. On this bike that makes 157 horsepower, uh, the bike goes down to about 100 horses. So it's much more approachable. Great way to set it up for wet mode, for instance. So we're gonna put it on medium, hit back. Scroll down once to DTC, that stands for Ducati Traction Control, hit enter. Uh, you'll see that you can go all the way to off on this one if you want to, uh, but you can incrementally add more traction control to the bike all the way to eight. Uh, and you can kind of see that it tells you that you know, there's a lot going on here. Interestingly enough, on seven, it is rear, or I'm sorry, on rain tires only. So they don't really want you to add too much more on this one. Uh, so if you're gonna be adding rain tires or slicks, you can kind of change the bike around a little bit to act accordingly for that. So for sport mode, most people tend to leave it on three or four. I'll put it on three, hit back, ABS. Again, there's one, two, three. So if you want it just for the front wheel only, uh, you'll put it on one. If you put it on two, it is both wheels and now your uh, cornering ABS is activated and on three, uh, it, it still has cornering ABS, but it's much more aggressive ABS. So on sport mode, we'll leave it on two, hit back, scroll down to DWC, that stands for Ducati Wheelie Control. We'll scroll all the way down. You do have off on this if your name is Josh Heron. Uh, if you wanna go above and add more wheelie control, you can simply start adding to it. And it kinda has a sliding scale of you know performance all the way to safe and stable. But because we're in sport mode, we're gonna leave it on two. And then engine brake control. This is really, really great. You can switch this from one to three. So one is going to be the maximum amount of engine brake, three being the least amount. Depending on where you're riding and how much engine brake you like, especially on a V-twin motorcycle, uh, you can kind of select this one. I'll leave it at two just because it's nice and neutral. And then DQS stands for Ducati Quick Shift. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's a really, really phenomenal function to be able to use on the motorcycle to allow you to have much smoother and easier lines and just kind of concentrate on that. But if you're kind of old school and you don't want to deal with that, you can put it on off and it allows you to have a fully manual uh, gear selection where you use the clutch to go up and down, but we'll leave it on on Go back and then if you notice the default uh, light has now been availed to us And that's because we've changed a couple of the factory settings. So there's no wrong answers here if you want to uh, Change stuff around you can and if you maybe think you've done it wrong Or let's say maybe you're selling the motorcycle at some point this will allow you to go back to default So you just press it once and it back and sport mode is now into default. Take your time, play with the other modes the same way I just did and just kind of uh, make the bike the way it is for you. I tend to suggest that if it's a brand new bike to you and you're not used to it, leave it in factory mode, kind of get used to the bike and then slowly start implementing those changes and have a little bit of fun with the bike. Let's go back. Below riding mode, if you click down once, you go into the pin code. Now, the bike is a keyed motorcycle, which means it doesn't have keyless functions on there. But as I mentioned much earlier in the video, the key on this bike has a chip and it is coded to this particular motorcycle. So if you lose that key, your 
new bike package should come with an additional key and you can use that to turn the bike on and off or uh, alternately you can use that key to go to your local dealership and hopefully they have a good relationship with a locksmith and they can create a new key with the code on there for you that they have to get. Uh, but if you don't have that coded key and you need to turn the bike on, if you were to turn the key into auxiliary power, the bike would ask you for a pin number. So it's a little bit uh, redundant for a pin. So if you want to change that, you can hit enter, enter again into modify pin. The factory setting is going to be all zero. So if you want to go up and down, you just press the up and down button. It'll change the numbers for you. But because we're all zero, we're going to hit enter, enter, enter. And then again, and it'll tell us that's correct. And then once it knows it's correct, it'll allow you to modify the pin. So again, you up and down for the buttons, that, the numbers that you want. It's just zero to nine. It's not, it's just numerical. Um, but because this is our demo, we're going to keep going to zero and tell it to memorize it by hitting enter again. And then once that's done, just hit back. And then we go down to the lap. You can have a neat little lap timer on this motorcycle. So if you're on the track, you can turn on the lap timer and once it's on, you can pr uh, simply press the pass button uh, for the headlights and it'll actually turn on your timer on there to have kind of a rudimentary track timer for your favorite track so you can tell your friends how fast you are. Below that, you have the backlight. This is for the dash. If you hit enter, you'll see that it has a uh, function for auto versus night versus day. Uh, the light does have a, I'm sorry, the bike has a light sensor on it. And so when it gets bright out, the dash tends to be white. And if it's dark out, the dash will turn black. So it's easier to, to look at uh, while you're riding it. But if you tend to like the black versus the white background more, you can simply choose night for the black and day for the white on this one. I like auto, so I will leave it there and let the bike handle that itself. Date and clock should be set by your favorite dealership, but if it's not, you go in there and hit enter, hit enter again, and that'll allow you to change the date. This has already been set, so if you wanted to change it up and down, we'll change the times, hit enter, go to the month, again, up or down, we'll change the uh, month, and then enter again goes to the date, up and down will set you, uh, let you set the date, hit enter again, and that's been set. And then for the clock, same thing. You press enter, it'll allow you to go up and down to AM, PM, enter, and then up and down for the hour, enter up and down for the uh, minutes, and then hit enter again to set, hit enter one more time to go back. And then we're gonna go out of that one. We're gonna scroll down to units. This is where you get to select the speed, miles versus kilometers, temperatures, Celsius versus Fahrenheit, and then consumption is going to be, well, for the US, we're gonna leave it at miles per gallon US. If you wanted to change that, you have miles per gallon UK as well versus kilometers per liter, liter per 100 kilometers, so it just depends on where you're at and what's better for you. Then we're gonna go back. We'll go down to service. This is a neat spot for you to kind of get an idea of your bike's uh, general health and when it needs to come see its favorite service department. Uh, the top of that, it'll show you your oil service. This bike is basically brand new, so you gotta do your break-in, which is 650 miles from now. And then your Desmo service in, the, in this bike is not until for another 14,950 miles. So it kind of counts it down for you. Go back, tire calibration. So. If you hit enter on this one, there's a start button there. I'm not gonna press it because the bike should be on and running and you've put new tires on there. And once you hit start on that, it will kind of walk you through what to do next, which is asking you to ride the bike at a certain miles per hour for a certain amount of time so that the computer on this bike, the IMU will know how to deal with the new tire uh, size so that your traction, wheelie, uh, gear shifter, everything works perfectly with the new tires on there. It's pretty sensitive to make sure, so make sure you do that if you're gonna put track tires on it. Scrolling down, DRL is for daytime running lamps. We're on auto currently, so if it gets dark out, the DRL will turn off and the headlights will come on. But if you don't wanna leave it to the bike to do that, you can simply go to manual. Now remember, if it's on and it's on auto mode, you can still press that little button on the right hand grip that I showed you that'll turn it on and off manually for you. And then turn indicators, just like the DRL, you can leave it on auto. So once you turn the turn signal on and you go through your turn, it will automatically turn off for you. Uh, you can still hit the turn signal cancellation button if you want to, or if you don't want it to have this auto function, you can go to manual. I like the auto, so I'll leave it there. Hit again, go back, and down for info. This is just telling us how much battery power we have and what RPM the bike is sitting at. Currently it is off, so we're at zero. We're gonna hit enter to go back. 
scroll down the exit, and that is everything you got on this motorcycle. So as I mentioned, this bike and the Street Fighter V2 have a lot in common in functionality. So it should be easy enough for you on either motorcycle to follow along in this video. If you have any questions, don't be shy about calling us at 503-292-7488. And as I've mentioned a bunch of times already, make sure to check out that owner's manual. There's a lot of information on there, and this video is just meant to be kind of a quick start for you. So have some fun, break it in, be gentle, be safe, and hopefully we'll see you at the track with this thing.